you are making the world a better place by listening to the joy of living podcast this is your guide to achieving a more purposeful powerful and positive life join barry shore in unlocking the best version of you and becoming happier healthier and wealthier and now here's your ambassador of joy Barry Shore. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good looking people. Remember, you're good looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. And we have good and abundance overflowing today. You are going to be mesmerized and transformed by the information, the transformative information you're going to be receiving because you know that you have tuned in consciously and conscientiously to the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore. And you tuned in for one reason and one reason only. And it's a great reason. It's the best reason in the whole world because you care the most in the entire world about you. Y-O-U. E-W-E. You. And that's great because when you become the best you, you make the world a better place. You build more bridges of harmony. You create more joy, happiness, peace, and love in the world. And we need that in the world. The world needs you. And right now, you are being joined by approximately 349,617 people around the world, all of whom are joining hands one to the other, finding out how you can become the best you. Because you know, in this show, the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore, we discuss the three fundamentals of life. And when you learn to internalize, utilize, and leverage these three fundamentals, you will become healthier, happier, and wealthier. And who doesn't want that? <laughs> Happier, healthier, and wealthier. Now, these three fundamentals, of course, are number one, life. Your life has purpose. And when you lead a purpose-driven life, you can have number two. In this case, number two is good. Go MAD. Now, get okay, MAD. Yes, MAD is a great acronym that stands for make a difference. You lead a purpose-driven life like our amazing guest today. You make a difference in the world. And the third fundamental of living life to the full is to unlock the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms. Simple everyday words and terms. Right now, this show, this remarkable podcast is being carried worldwide over the internet, that magical, mythical, mystical platform. If you ask anybody, what does WWW stand for? Invariably, it'll tell you it has to do with the internet. And factually speaking, they're correct. But in our world, the world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, WWW stands for what a wonderful world. And what a, is a word, right? W-H-A-T-A. What a wonderful world. We have thank you to uh, Tip of the Hat and a big thank you to Louis Armstrong, Satchmo, for enabling that song to go worldwide and not just touch tens of millions or hundreds of millions, but billions of people around the planet. And whenever you hear even the opening bars of what a wonderful world, what do you do right away? You can't help but you smile. Now, smile is one of the most important words you could ever internalize, utilize, and leverage in your life because smile stands for seeing miracles in life every day see miracles in life every day now before covid and by the way covid's gone panic's over in a year or two you won't even think about it anymore god willing but when i be just before covid i was speaking to a group of about 5200 people and humans without masks on the masquerade wasn't there yet and I was telling the story about Barry Shore and discussing smiles, seeing miracles in life every day. And people raising their hands say, hey, Barry Shore, Barry Shore, I've been up for hours already. I haven't seen any miracles. And I asked them, are you here? Can you hear? Can you see? Can you stand? I can't. Can you walk? I can barely do that. You have water, drink, food to eat, place to sleep, family, friends. Every single one of those is a miracle. And what's the, what's the proof? Simple as proof. A million people did not get out of bed this morning. You know why? They died. <laughs> By definition, if you're watching or listening, you didn't. And therefore, you have an obligation to live life to the full, to live exuberantly. Now, imagine the following. Standing up in the morning, hale and hearty, able to leave tall buildings in a single bound, and that evening being in the hospital 
totally, completely paralyzed. And it was not from an automobile accident. It was not a spinal injury, a rare disease that I never heard of the day before took over my body and rendered me a quadriplegic. Nothing on my body moved. I was 144 days in the hospital. I was uh, two years in a hospital bed in my own home. I couldn't turn over by myself. Four years in a wheelchair. I had braces on both my legs, from my hips to my ankles, and that was progress. Thank God today I'm able to be vertical and ambulatory with the help of a seven-foot walking wand, but I still can't walk up a stair by myself. I can't walk up a curb by myself. Now, I've helped 12 hours a day, seven days a week. But you hear my voice, positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant, and it's all because of one word, smile, seeing miracles in life every day. I can tell you a quick story. My eight-year-old niece comes over to me a few weeks ago. She says, Uncle Barry, Uncle Barry, can we spell smile, S-M-I-E-L? And I thought about it. It sounds the same, smile, smile. I asked her, how come? I mean, why not? She says, because then it would stand for seeing miracles in everyday life. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes. Well, what was she doing? She was creating the kind of world she wants to live in. Now, create is a wonderful acronym that stands for causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. Thinking. Thank God you have a brain. Your brain has 100 billion brain cells and more than 120 trillion synapses connecting all those brain cells. And they're there for more than deciding what kind of latte you want this morning. The ability to do neuro-linguistic program to choose the way you respond in any given situation. The six most important words you'll ever hear and use in your life are choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Now, before we bring on our amazing guest, and she is amazing. She puts the zing in amazing. Uh, I'd like to warn you in advance that your humble host, Barry Shore, does use four-letter words. I even use a four-letter F-U word. I do it because it's fun and the shock value. Now, of course, the four-letter words that we use because we live in the world of positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant are love, life, hope, grow, free, gift, Pray, play, swim, <laughs> four-letter words. And the four-letter F-U word is fun. Fun, yes, F-U, capital N, capital N. But people say, Barry Shaw, Barry Shaw, fun's only spelled with three letters. Not in our world. The world of the positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. Fun is spelled F-U, capital N, capital N. So after the show, you have a twinkle in your eye and a smile on your face. Remember the stands for you. See your family and your friends. Point your finger and say, F-U, everybody. But remember to add right away, capital N, capital N. I say, where'd you get that? I say, I listen to Barry Shore on the joy of living. And he wants to teach the world to F-U, capital N, capital N. Now, just before we bring on amazing Dr. Liddy, I'm going to urge everybody to do the following. I want you to use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day from now for the rest of your life. And if you do this, the two most powerful words three times a day, you will change your energy for the better, that of your family, your friends, and all living beings throughout the world. And these two words are, drum roll, fanfare, ta -da, ta da Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks stands for to harmonize and network kindness. To harmonize and network kindness. The Dalai Lama has been quoted as saying, and I read in his writings, be kind whenever possible. And as he says, it's always possible. <laughs> so imagine you're going into your into a coffee shop and you order your latte, no mask, no nothing, everything's fine. And you sit down, somebody brings it to you. you say, thank you. You walk into the coffee shop, you order a fancy latte, you sit down, a few minutes goes by, nobody brings it, you go to the counter and say, oh, I'm sorry, we forgot, and we're busy, we'll bring it to you. You sit down, a couple of minutes go by, you still, somebody brings it to you, you still say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, it's raining out. Someone holds the door open for you, you say, thank you. You're walking out of the coffee shop, it's raining out, and somebody slams the door on you, you say, thank you. You're stuck in traffic, you're late for an appointment, somebody cuts you off, you say, Thank you. You get up in the middle of the night and you stub your toe and it hurts. You say, thank you. To harmonize and network kindness. Kind is a great word that stands for keep inspiring noble deeds. I cannot think of anybody that inspires noble deeds. Me, she inspires. 
that I want to share with you right now than the wonderful, amazing, fabulous talk to Liddy Lewis. Liddy, please say hello to 352,000 people around the world. Hello, amazing 362,000 people around the world. It's my pleasure to be here with the very fabulous and amazing, marvelous, very sure. Woo wee! Okay, well, flattery might get you somewhere. Kid. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, I need to do the following. I don't usually do this, Liddy, uh, because what I do is I make a very short introduction to right. a, a guest, especially one. You're, I'm not going to read the entire bio because we'll take up the rest of the hour. <laughs> <clears throat> but I want to set up <clears throat> some bona fides mm -hmm. for Liddy because it's important. We're going to be discussing some very intricate and important aspects about your life because yeah. what the heck what does law have to do with anything yeah. so we'll get, let's tie the part of the title of her book uh we're going to be discussing her background as an attorney her background as a phd her background in wall street her background with the un her background in helping thousands of business owners become remarkably successful because of her ability to understand what's called legal branding and cryptocurrency and the ability really to create legacy. So I want everybody to know up front <clears throat> that when Liddy is speaking about these particular areas, it's not speaking in theory. Mm. She's speaking as someone with hands-on, get your hand, roll up your sleeves, turn over the dirt, plant the seed, yeah plow and make sure there's a harvest she comes with bona fides so now we're going to deep go deep right jump right in let's start with the first one which is what you have termed legal branding now mm -hmm. branding we think we know nobody knows what branding <laughs> is you know people say oh yeah brand 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 the only thing i still think about a brand is that uh unfortunately putting something on a uh, cow you know <laughs> It's branding, but really branding is the ability to have uh, somebody remember who you are. Right. Well, what is legal branding? Wonderful, Liddy. Yeah, so we get branding. We get that we want to be visible. We get that we want people to recognize us, know us for the good things that we do, not necessarily the naughty things <laughs> that we do. But legal branding is that the federal law which covers the entire United States, regardless of what state you may live in, um, the founding fathers were really smart. The George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, uh, Alexander Hamilton, they all were men that were creative. We forget that. We often think of them as presidential, but before they were presidential, they were military men. They were fighting to make America, America. And the reason they were fighting, they wanted to have control and ownership of their thoughts, their ideas, their way of life. They didn't want to be beholden to Europe anymore. So they put into the Constitution, which covers all of us, whether you're American or not, if you're on U.S. soil, the Constitution applies to you. They put into the Constitution that we have the right to protect and own our creative ideas. We have the right to protect and control our pursuit of happiness. We own the right to protect and control how our image is seen in the world. Because that was very important to them back then, because they were seen as indentured servants. And we forget that right? That these men that came to the United States and built America were viewed by England as sort of the cast-offs, if you will, those that, that, those that weren't favored, that were exploring and creating a new world that was a colony, that was whose sole purpose was to make money to bring it back to Europe. So these men decided, we are men of value. We can decide our um, life and our legacy, and we will go to war for that. And they did. That's the American Revolution. So a lot of our federal laws, not state law, but federal law gives us the right to protect our ideas. And that is copyright, which gives you the right to copy. If you're giving other individuals the, the law, the right to copy what you create, they can't just come along and lift it and say, this is mine. They can't use your language, your songs, your way, your persona of doing things 
without permission from you. But before you can get give them permission, you first have to copyright it. You have to register it with the federal government. The second part of the branding is trademark. And we know trademark, right? In its simplest term, it's our mark in trade. It's a recognizable symbol that you say, hey, that's Barry's logo. Hey, that's Barry's color. Hey, that's Dr. Liddy's way of spelling her name. That's out there in the business world. So you have the right under the federal government to create and carve out for yourself what that symbol is going to be. How do you want to be seen in the world? The visibility of all the beauty of you. But you have to take that action. That right doesn't appear magically right upon the moment you're born. The laws in the United States require you to take steps, requires you to do things, requires you to enforce things. That if you see someone using your copyright or using your trademark, in the legal term, we call it seize and desist. Stop, don't do it again, right? And that's meant to give notice to say, uh, uh, uh. This is mine. So when we talk about branding and we look at colors and logos and songs, a particular style that's your own, if you're not protecting it with the federal law, not state law, the federal law, because the internet is federal, it's going across state lines. So if you're only doing it in your state, guess what? You only have protection within your state, which is why you want to do it federally. So legal branding is taking your creative ideas, is creating your super duper, super duper juices that you create and claiming it under the law as yours. And you can give people permission to use it. That's your licensing, that's your franchising, that's your monetization of your ideas. But the vast majority of business owners don't do it primarily because I don't think they know that they should do it. And if they know that they should, they don't know how. So that's why you see a lot of people's things being replicated without permission. And the beauty of the law, and I say this to people all the time, the power of the law, at least in the US, extends beyond your lifetime. Copyright law, the ideas that you create, are yours for your entire lifetime, no matter how long you live, 75, 85, 105, it's yours. And it's yours for 75 years after your death. Talk about legacy. And this is what America is really founded on, this concept of you build it once, you protect it, you monetize it, and you pass it on intergenerationally. And it's something that we're just not taught, right? It's there. It's in the obvious. It's, it's right there in the books. But nobody knows to look for it. <laughs> so let's let's unpack some of this vast treasure that you have just shared with this audience. I want to emphasize three things. First of all, again, Dr. Liddy speaks from experience. Oh yeah. <laughs> not just theory. She is a working being that brings benefit to all. The other thing is, Dr. Liddy, is that our audience, thank God, is worldwide because of mm. the internet, because of life today, et cetera, et right. cetera. Most of the audience is under the age of 38, 80% of mm -hmm. under the age of 38. Yes, these are the people who are, gonna, who are making a difference in the world, not just mm -hmm. going to. And this is also, and I say this with great love and affection to the rest of the world, this is the reason people love America. Mm -hmm. What you just did in a brief span of time is to bring to the fore the understanding of the American experience that very few people either know about mm. or even care. When you now made, painted the picture of understanding that some of the great beings that you mentioned, like Washington, Jefferson, Madison, mm -hmm. Hamilton, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, who all did become presidential, except for Hamilton, but the, mm -hmm. he's, he's on money, so that's pretty cool. Pretty good. Uh, <laughs> but the point is that they were here in the United States, even though in their own right, they own well, landowners and such, and, but they were subject to oh, yeah. the country. Oh, so yeah. they came as, as you said, either indentured servants on their own or most of the people that were in the United States. And the Re American Revolution, as you said, was a revolution of thought. thought. A revolution of mind that there mm -hmm. were such things as God given rights mm -hmm. and that I am of value, I am mm -hmm. worthy. That I think is the fuel that makes the American rocket and the American dream 
valid in the world. And what you just shared with us, remember, everybody's watching. This show is not about Barry Shaw, great guy that he is. Not even about <laughs> Dr. Liddy, amazing woman that she is. This show is about you. Why owe you? That's the only reason we're here, is to enable you to be the best you. With these kernels of truth, mm -hmm. you can plant them and learn about them and make sure that you do know that you are protecting yourself Mm -hmm. and your generations thereafter with what's available to us. Because uh, you might like this one a lot, Dr. Liddy. Ready? Yes. Because your expertise is law. So law is a wonderful acronym that stands for love and wisdom. Ooh. Love and wisdom. But you've just demonstrated both. <laughs> you just proved that law is not something stale oh. on a book or in something a library or just you know esoteric law is love and wisdom because love mm -hmm. and wisdom is what enables beings to say i have an idea i'm going to go out i'm going to make it happen and if it doesn't i'll go out and make it happen again and if it right. doesn't i'll keep going because right. that's the american way oh yeah part of the genius of this country and you were so articulate about it i wrote down is the ability to I have my own thoughts. I control them. Mm -hmm. You may not tell me what to think. Right. You may try to tell me what to do. And even that is only for my benefit, by the way. Like you said, the mm -hmm. law is there to serve. That's right. The law. So that's what love and wisdom is what law stands for. Now, you mentioned something else that is just so wonderfully powerful. If you don't know that you should, which is the first step, and mm -hmm. then when you think now you know that you should, you don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Dr. Liddy wrote, writes her books. She exists. She's there to help. By the way, how is another great acronym? Helping others win. Oh. That's what you do. That's who you are. The United Nations did not ask her to participate in their programs and be involved with the World Bank and be involved with countries all over the world, helping micropreneurs, entrepreneurs, large businesses with her insights because she's just a person. She is a dynamo. She's a generator of goodness. She's a channel of goodness, a child of God. So I'd like to go and, and let's dig a little bit deeper into mm -hmm. the legal branding just for a few more moments. And then we're going to have a break because sponsors love us and they want to urge <laughs> people to use their products and such. And then we're going to come back. And we're going to talk about something that is just oh so current uh, that everybody wants to just go to lean in and say, what? What? She not? This is the crypto queen. But let's go continue with our legal branding, if you'd be so kind. Mm -hmm. What is it that you see as the greatest barrier to people not doing what you you said so easily, the simple steps of trademark, mm -hmm. registration, mm -hmm. uh, color, name, uh, mm -hmm. certain frequencies, uh, music, uh, well, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and to register them on the federal level? What? What prohibits or stops people? It's not the money because most of these things are relatively inexpensive. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah, they are very inexpensive. Um, and I, I, I think there are three reasons why people don't do it. One is the classic, they don't know. And I say this all the time to my students or entrepreneurs that I'm training or executives that I'm training. We don't know what we don't know. And that's the truth of it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it bites a lot of time. And it bites a lot of time. So, so that's one. You don't know what you don't know. And number two is, and I'm and I'm very passionate about this, is that our educational system, at least in America, does not teach us these things. And I truly think it's intentional. I, I've, I've reached a point because I've been a professor for 22 years that nothing in the curriculum guides us as professors to teach the student about this. So if we're not teaching it in the classroom, we know they're not learning it from home because their parents didn't know it. They're not showing it on television or YouTube or any sort of social media. So where are they supposed to get this information from? How do they know it even exists? And I think, and I'm going to say it out loud, that it's by design. Mm-hmm. 
right? If you, if, if everything around you is encouraging you to put stuff on YouTube, you know, put stuff on Instagram, put all your secret powers of how you do your specialness out in the world for free. You can't recapture it. Once it's out, it's out. It's like the thoroughbred that once it gets going, it goes. <laughs> Good luck trying to catch that thor you know, thoroughbred. You can't until it wears itself out. And it's this, and, and I think that's part of the reason they 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 don't teach us intentionally in our educational school system. It doesn't matter whether it's a public school, like I went to public school in Brooklyn all my life, or if it's a private school in Connecticut, <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're not teaching that in the educational system. And I think the third reason that people don't do it is when they become aware, let's say the show, and people are like, oh my God, I should be protecting my things. They think it's hard. What is it about us as Americans that we always think things are hard? And oftentimes they're so easy if you just start, right? If you just start the process, you realize, oh, it's not that hard at all. We psych ourselves out. And I don't know where that comes from. I don't know if it's a learned behavior that we're watching other people and we're like, oh, we don't want this to happen to us. So we don't want that to happen to us. And therefore we avoid learning we avoid applying what we learn and we avoid actually sharing information with others. I've watched my students learn from me. Some will bring in their parents. Professor, can my parent, my, my dad or mom owns a business? Can they sit in? Sure, because I teach entrepreneurship. How do you do it? Right? How do you really do it? There's, there's some systematic ways, there's some innovative ways, but there's a structure right to it all. It just doesn't happen overnight the way most people are hoping that it happens. And there are parents that are successful, but they're doing it, I want to say, just by luck. And God bless them. The luck works for a short period of time and then it runs out. So those are the three. They don't know what they don't know. The educational system doesn't do it. And when they do learn about it, they think it's hard and they psych themselves out not to do it. Um, and, and, and it's unfortunate, but I think that's, you know, even on a systematic level, I, I look at this, not just in New York, I look at this across the country. I look at it globally because I teach for the United Nations, the same thing in Latin America, the same thing in Europe. And I don't know where that comes from the human ability to doubt ourselves consistently enough that we don't take any action. So, yeah. <clears throat> as I said before, <laughs> our cup runneth over <laughs> with good. You didn't even have any idea. I'm talking to people who are listening and watching worldwide. Right. And we're up to 368,000 people now. The, the genius of what you're hearing here, and I'm going to urge people, I'm going to do this again another time during the show. <laughs> you, you got to hear this again. You got to share this with five people. Notice I didn't say 50 or 100, 1,000, you know, right. go out there. Right. Share it with five people, consciously and conscientiously, that we will touch a million and a half people. Because what Liddy has just said to you, the three barriers to you becoming the best you. You don't know? Okay, now you can't ever use that as an excuse because <laughs> now you know. Number two, poor education, and I wholeheartedly agree with you, Liddy. It is intentional. Mm -hmm. It is, I would say, almost malice of forethought in today's right. world. And I don't know if it started that way. It may have also, but it certainly has gone this way. And because the ability for people to Want, not want to teach others is a mindset. And that mindset is mm. zero sum game. Well, there's only so much in the pie and therefore we let everybody know about this. You know, there's less for me. That is not an American way of looking at life. That has mm. happened over the past hundred years or so. That is not how it was the, past, the previous right. 150. Right. It's a mindset that says, this is ours, We're, we, whoever the we are. Mm -hmm. So the education system doesn't teach people, I'll give you an example. Uh, in one of my first times when I speak to groups, especially younger people, I mean, high school, I spoke to a group of high school girls recently, and I asked, how many people here have ever heard the rule of 72? Mm. <laughs> if you don't know the rule of 72, which means that money doubles every 
12 years when you divide by the interest rate and such like that mm -hmm. so you know how much you can mm -hmm. earn you need to earn to double money if you don't know the the absolute fundamental basics mm -hmm. of financial literacy and again i agree with you it's intentional now what our role is liddy myself and people that want to be of benefit to the world and everybody here listening wants to is to bring education, bring light. Mm -hmm. It's not a zero sum game. God runs the world. God right. is infinite. There's plenty for everybody. I'm going to say right. it again. Plenty of everybody. Right. Number three, though. You're right. It was luck and pluck. Notice I said <laughs> luck and luck. That got people most of the time where they are. But it's structure that mm -hmm. enables that not only to be passed on to other generations, not even so much the business, but the ability to do business. See, mm -hmm. business is, to my humble opinion, the highest calling in life. And if you look at the word business, you might like this, Liddy. Business is spelled, of course, B-U-S-I-N-E-S-S, -S -S, right? Oh, yeah. Notice that the U comes before the I. Business is about serving. That's what Liddy does. She is serving others. She's thinking about the U. The, her I will be taken care of. People mm -hmm. have fear in their lives. Fear is false expectations appearing real. What if? Well, what if you succeed? Oh, yeah. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to put everybody put on your seatbelt, buckle up, get ready to lean in, because when we come back from these brief commercial sponsorships, we're going to talk about crypto, because this woman knows from where she speaks. Be right back after these great, amazing informational videos. Hi, everybody. Barry Shaw here, the ambassador of joy. We've entered in to the fall season, and fall means coming up to winter. Holidays, all kinds of stuff, not just stuff, stress, S-T-R-E-S-S. -S. You know, I've spoken about stress many times on the show, and with stress coming on with the holiday season, everybody wants to be happy and such, but everybody knows what's going on. I want to talk to you about something really important for your benefit. It's called Talk Space, T -A -L -K -S -P -A -C -E. Talkspace, T-A-L-K-S-P-A-C-E, Talkspace.com. This is an online therapy program, show, website, and it's available for you. It is so important for you to be involved. You all know my story. Standing up in the morning, hail and hearty in the evening, quadriplegic. Okay, nobody has to go through something that drastic to know that speaking to somebody, a professional licensed therapist, can be of benefit. I know. It's true. It helped me. It can help you. This is so easy to do. You are talking about secure, professional process. It's the number one online therapy platform in the country. It works around your schedule, your convenience. I urge you, please, match yourself with a licensed therapist. Go to Talkspace.com, T-A-L-K-S-P-A-C-E, Talkspace.com. Get $100 off your first month with the promo code Barry. B-A-R-R-Y, go to Talkspace.com, put in the promo code Barry, B-A-R-R-Y, and you'll get $100 off your first month. Please do it. You'll thank me. Best wishes. Bye now. Imagine the kind of place you would want to shop for your favorite fur baby pet. Honest Pets.co. Well, you found it. Honestpets.co. Not .com, .co. This is your go-to spot for the best, the cleanest pet treats that exist anywhere on the planet. All of the brands go through a rigorous review to make sure they meet the high standards of cleanliness, health benefits, and naturalness. This site was started by a husband and wife team, and it's veteran-owned, and that care about pets, especially dogs and cats, and coming soon, bird treats. These are very nice young people who really care about making a difference because a portion of proceeds go to support veteran organizations with a focus on service dogs. This is the place where you want to go. You want to tell your friends this has the finest, yummiest, freshest, all-natural treats and stuff for your fur baby. So go there, honestpets.co honestpets.co. Do it now. 
Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good-looking people. Remember, you're good-looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. You have found good. If you've been listening to the first part of this, you're sitting in amazement. And again, I urge everybody, everything you want to know about Dr. Liddy, and there's so much to know, and you can gain so much, just go to my website, www, what a wonderful world dot barryshore.com. Everything about Dr. Liddy will be there and more. You're going to need and want to use this information. Remember what she's just done is she got an ax in the head, opened up your mind and expanded it to understand what America is about, what business is about, what legacy is about. So yeah, I ask you, Put on your seatbelt, get ready, because we're going on a rocket ship. This is Jeff Bezos kind of stuff we're talking about now, because we're going into the stratosphere as the crypto queen is going to talk to us about crypto. And I will say right up front, wonderful Liddy, I got my seatbelt on. I need to know. I want to know, because to me, crypto is at best confusing. So <laughs> please unpack and give us a pathway <laughs> to understanding. Well, I love that you say crypto is at best confusing because it is confusing. So let's let's just be honest about crypto. And the thing about crypto that I that I would like folks to begin with and then hopefully we'll end with a deeper understanding is that crypto is not anything that we might think that it is. It is exists only in the cyber world. There's no paper that says this is crypto. There's no book. So we're used to money or fiat, as the Italians had called it, right, that there was some paper, right? There was a bill on it, number five, number 10, number 100. That we're used to. We can feel it. We can smell it. <laughs> we can put it in our pocket, right? We know we've got dollar bills, dollar bills, dollar bills, as the rappers would say. But the creative idea of humanity is what if we could go a step beyond credit cards. Now we're used to credit cards, right? There's no dollar bill in credit cards. It's a little piece of plastic with a little strip on the back that connects your transaction, whatever you're buying, whatever you're selling to a portal. God knows where that portal is, right? On the other side, computers are talking to computers that are taking money out of your account, wherever it is you're checking or a credit card, a, a traditional credit card account, and they're transferring digitally along the radio waves to another person. It's not real. It's electromagnetic, right? It's following into the waves. We don't see that. We just see, oh, it's paid. And we're like, okay, great. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we take our stuff. Crypto is the same sort of methodology. It's not real in that you can hold it like money or coins. In the digital space, they've created money. And they've created money in different sort of dimensions. So think of it as a $5 bill, a $1 bill, a $100 bill, and so on. But those denominations are different in the crypto world. They, are, they have names. So rather than a $5 bill, it might have the word Ethereum. Rather than a $10 bill, it might have the name um, Grengo, which is a crypto <laughs> term. So you get to name the money. So rather than a numerical value, you get to name the money. And the people that are naming the money are the people that are actually creating the digital coding that is tied to the valuation of the money. So it's all being done in cyberspace. There's no real anything other than the little blips, 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 blips <laughs> that are going on in your screen. Now let's go back in time. I like going back in time. The idea of crypto came about because there were some guys non-Americans, primarily European, that thought that there would be a money problem on a global level. They were right. There was a money problem. Just think of 2008, 2009, what happened with the housing crisis, right? Banks didn't have money. You couldn't, a lot of people couldn't get cash money. A lot of credit cards weren't working because they were tied to those digital transactions in cyberspace that, cyberspace that didn't have any money either. Crypto kept working. 
because they were not tied to banks. They were not tied to the money supply of the Federal Reserve. They were an alternative money source that was active throughout the whole 2008 financial crisis. So if you had invested in these types of named fiats, you made money. Why is that? Because you were able to continue transactions separate from the traditional Federal Reserve as we know it in the United States, separate from the traditional banks, Chase, Bank of America, name one, they're, they're all working on the same system, right? This is a totally different system. This is an alternative system where you, if you learn, you and I, and the whole team that's watching, you could learn so much about crypto just on YouTube. They put out the information for you to learn for free. And the reason they do that is because they believe the more people that are educated about how crypto works, the more they'll begin to realize they've been jerking us. That's an official word. <laughs> they've been jerking us financially the whole time. How do I prove this to you? Well, you have a savings account. How much did you make last month? About <laughs> less than a penny. Right? That's a savings account. Right? Yeah, by the way, that's if you had $10,000 in it. <laughs> If you had $10,000, maybe you made a dollar, right? So you are not going to become well-off or wealthy or well-to-do or um, secure in retirement financially if you are using the traditional banking system. So let me tell you about the banking system. So since I know a little bit about securities law, I used to regulate it in New York, which is tied to the banking system. Our banking laws in the United States was created by one man, Mr. J.P. Morgan. He was the banker to the United States. When, when in World War II, when the United States went broke after the great crash in 1929, they went to Mr. John Pierre Point Morgan in Brooklyn, New York, to borrow money from him. The United States did. And he said, great, I'll lend you my millions that are all sitting in Europe, but I want to create the banking law for the United States. So guess who the banking laws benefit? Do you think it benefits the people that go in to open the nice little savings account, the nice little checking or our nice, nice little market fund? No, it benefits the bank. How do I know this? Because you get charged at least 10 bucks a month for the privilege of having a checking or a savings account, <laughs> right? Even if you don't use it, <laughs> right? I haven't written a check in years, right? But I'm still paying $10 a month for my checking account. And the interest that you're getting on a monthly basis is about three cents. So who's winning here? The banks are winning. And a lot of that was designed by Mr. J.P. Morgan. Now, J.P. Morgan has is, is gone beyond private lending to a commercial bank. We call it Chase. So J.P. Morgan Bank bought Chase Bank a couple of years ago. So what does that mean? It means it's the collapse of the commercial with the consumer banking. And when you bring commercial and consumer together, the commercial is going to cover and control consumer banking, and it's going to push it down. Why? Because there's much more money flowing through commercial banking than there is in consumer banking. Corporations make a lot more money than, than, than individuals. It's the simple truth of it. Therefore, the laws got changed in the banking world to benefit the banks. And who got hurt or penalized? The consumer, which is why you'll never get rich by putting your money in a bank. It's not designed <laughs> for you to get rich, but yet we all have one. You're better off really in a money, money market account, right? At a credit union. Why is that? Well, credit unions are totally separate from the banking world. They use the same types of systems to transfer money, but money, but credit unions are owned by the owners. So you and I can be owners of a credit union. Their focus is the community in which they sit in. It's not in making money for the owners wherever they may be in the world, which are usually corporations. So putting your money in a credit union, they know you, they communicate with you, they can make exceptions for you because it's the community banking concept of we're taking care of the community. So I encourage everyone to do that. Get rid of the big banks. They're just taking money out of your account and you don't then you think it's a privilege to be with them, and it's not. So the money markets that are in the credit unions are really your best, safest bet. But let's go back to crypto. Crypto is even better. Crypto says, listen, 
your credit union can only make money based on the limited area in which it's operating. When you enter the internet, you make money on a global level. And depending on what you're interested in, there's different types of cryptocurrency for a gazillion million things. You like green energy, great. There's about 20 of them. If you like solar energy, great. There's about 20 of those. If you like the concept of electricity, great. There's a couple of those too. The key is figuring out which ones are better than others, just like it's always been for investing in securities. The only difference in crypto though is the people that are running these types of um, money fiats, if you will, these the different coins, right? Which is why they all have mm -hmm. different names. The descriptions of the coins tell you what it is that they're designed to support. It could be that they're supporting um, children in, in Guatemala, right? It could be that they're supporting non-human trafficking. It could be that they're supporting more churches everywhere. It could be that they're supporting startups. They define the, the, the currency, the cryptocurrency for the purpose for which it is designed for. So you know what is happening in that particular area, in that subject matter. So I tell everyone, go on, the, go on YouTube, you'll learn so much about the basics. Then when you know the basics and you can have a conversation, join any of the free sort of cryptocurrency groups that are available for your particular thing that you're interested in. Then when you get beyond that, join a group that teaches you how to trade the crypto right? That you're writing on information. You're writing on what is happening positively. You don't have to invest in anything negative. Every investment I have is a positive investment. You can invest in micro, um, micro accounts that are helping individuals in Uganda to get more cows. You can invest in um, microcurrencies in the Caribbean that are helping women start businesses. You can invest, there's so, there are thousands of them. So the key is if you wanna do good, there's a crypto for doing the particular good that you wanna do in the world. If you just wanna make a whole lot of money, there's a crypto that'll help you make a whole <laughs> lot of money. It's whatever, it's whatever your heart tells you to invest in. The beauty of crypto though, it grows really fast. It's not on a monthly. You don't wait for a monthly turn up and down in the market. It's almost infinitesimal how quickly it moves. Why? Because it's not restricted with the traditional securities and banking and trading laws. The laws don't exist that govern crypto. They're trying to create them. I'm part of the group that's trying to write them. But I like the fact that it's sort of the come with what moves you in your heart. Find a token. We call it a token. Find a, um, 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 a, a digital currency that resonates with what you want to support, whatever that may be. Learn about it. Be involved in that group talk and they're, they're happy to talk. We talk to each other all the time. I get more emails from the crypto people than I get from clients. <laughs> and I've got a very bit of clients. And the reason they talk to each other so much is because they want to share the communication of knowledge that they're learning almost on an instantaneous basis because movement, right? Trading, whether it's securities or crypto, is about speed. There's a reason why we call it first to market. Because once you're one of the first two or three that are doing this fabulous thing, what are we going to learn? Others are going to replicate you. So you've got to get in there early. And the way you learn to get in there early is by being involved in the different discussion boards that are happening, following the key people that are already doing the massive research for you. I was in Puerto Rico um, in June of this year for a crypto conference, a global crypto conference. First of all, let me just say there are very few women that are involved in crypto. I was but shocked. Let me, let me put you on pause for a moment just on that. One might have thought that since all of this discussion you said was as equality oriented as anything, that there should be at least the same number of men as women. Why do you think, and again, now I don't want to go in the weeds right, too much. Right, right. Why do you think that there'd be, let's say, 90% men and 10% women. 
Yeah, it's probably more like 95% men and 5% okay. women. It's Why? that bad. Part of it is as for women, we were taught, and I go back to the, you know, what we said earlier, we were taught that we're not good with money. We were taught, right, that we should find someone to help us with money. We were taught that we're likely not going to have much money. Right. So I want everybody to hear again what you're saying. I, I purposely put up, I set you up with that. So I you know could, you did. You, you know, so you could articulate it. See, because if I say it, it's not oh. as, as authoritative as you. I mean, you are, look what look at you have. Uh, you're a woman, you're successful, you're a woman of color, you're intelligent, you have degrees, and you understand, it took you years to get to this point of understanding oh, yeah. that the system mm -hmm. was constrained and dedicated towards keeping people, and I say this in the true term, mm -hmm. sense of the term, ignorant. Yeah. Not, I mean, oh, just yeah. un ignorant means unaware. Unaware. It's better for you to be unaware. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now, but now that it's now the new generation, let's mm -hmm. call them people under, I said, most of the people here listening are under 38, but the people under 25, in my humble opinion, are the drivers, the real drivers of what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. And so again, I, and I you're absolutely you. correct. And Barry, you're absolutely correct about that. If you go to any of the crypto uh, hangouts or chat rooms or in person, it's mostly young men. And also, and also mostly older men who for a long time have wanted to do something like this, but crypto hadn't been invented yet. They knew in their hearts that they wanted to be a part of something like this, but they, it, it wasn't there. It wasn't there. So you have this dichotomy of very young men that are creating all of this. Older men that are like, hey, I've been waiting for this and I've got some money. I've got some capital that I can put towards your idea. And the women are very few in presence. And part of that, and they welcome women. They, I had the best time in Puerto Rico. I learned so much that I didn't even know that was going on. In crypto okay, so in let's, let's talk about that. What we've had, we've been in discussion on this for less than 15 minutes. Liddy? I am so thankful. <laughs> I have learned more in listening in the past 15 minutes than I have in listening to hours of other people ramble about, well, crypto, you know, it's going to go up, it's going to go up. And okay, but nobody was unpacking it and laying it out to be visible and to see. I, I want to make a statement, or actually it's a question, but it's a statement. Mm -hmm. So let's take a person, let's call it a, a Hollywood person, just only because... Mm -hmm. Hollywood means fame, but a, a person who has a name and says a million followers on Instagram who says, my husband and I, we want to create a cryptocurrency for feeding mm -hmm. children in the United States of America. By the way, just I want to go right. back to America. People don't realize that there are millions oh, yeah. of children that go to sleep hungry. that don't have food on the weekends, but we do we want to feeding children in America. Okay, that's what it's going to be called. We're going to call that our mm -hmm. our, our token. They could literally go out and create that. Mm -hmm. And then, God willing, millions of people start buying it, trading it, using it, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. doing whatever they can. And it goes from, pick a number, from a tenth of a penny to a ten cents. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, those of you who are financially illiterate means you just went up a thousand percent. But <laughs> because you went... From we we call it a mill, tenth of a penny, right, right? To ten cents, and then it could go up to a dollar, yeah, which gained ten times again. It could go up to a hundred dollars. In other words, there is no boundary, right? So I'm saying what you have done for me, and I trust for hundreds of thousands of people around the world, is open up eyes into a window of a world that you're right. I want. I I I, I cringe when I'm about to say these words. We're going to have to. Uh, conclude this particular portion of our discussion because I think there's many more coming with something I just want to give you a, a fun little insight into something. So I'm older than you, much older than you chronologically. <laughs> I'm the old guy. So I'm 72 chronologically. So I remember clearly, clearly, Liddy, at the age of 14, working in what we used to call a bucket shop. 
It's a, mm. a, a boiler room. Or we answer phones, but we answer phones for the police uh, association. We answer phone for public radio and things like that. So in those days, um, everybody knows what public radio is in America. Right. You don't know the rest of the world, public radio in America. And we used to have these um, fun drives, right? Mm. And we used to call them pledge drives. Drives. Now, pledge drives was somebody would call them and they would pledge to give $50, $10, whatever the amount. They would pledge it. You know why? Because when I first started at the age of 14, which is almost almost 60 years ago, there were no credit cards. I mean, right. it, it was a diner's club. There was It was right. fledgling. Right. It wasn't that everybody had one. Today, people right. have 17. They want to get rid of them. The right. point is that in the earlier days of this thing called credit card, which was right, the same idea. Mm -hmm. okay, it was plastic, but it wasn't. It was electronic. It was digits. Mm -hmm. It was so new. It was alien that it took decades to reach a particular point whereby you were on college campuses signing up kids unknowingly to get them in, you know, stick them with mm -hmm. becoming addicted to paying high interest rates and borrowing money and such like that. But I see the analogy mm -hmm. to crypto and recognizing that it's untethered from mm -hmm. the control of the banking system, which is why, by the way, I think it was just uh, Goldman announced and Blackstone and one other large entity, a bank, that they are owned. Somebody is, somebody is joining forces with uh, MasterCard to mm -hmm. work with to accept crypto because they recognize mm -hmm. if they don't, it's an end run and they'll be out of business in 20 years. Oh, or yeah. Beside the point. Oh, so yeah. you just gave the historical analysis of why this must happen because there are no boundaries anymore. It is all digital. And for a, the credit card, somehow they get like Stripe, 2.9%. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why? Hello? Not only that, Liddy, can you take money out of your bank on Sunday? No. Well, yes and no. You can try and do something, but no. Why are they closed on weekends? You know why? Because they want to because every dollar that sits in a bank, they lend out and make money. Over, we all know. No, we don't know. Right. Some people know that. You know that. I know that. Yeah. So they make money on our money and we don't get the benefit. Crypto, right. you're saying, says, no, you're, right. an, you're like a credit union. You're part of the family. Is that what you're yep. saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. And, and, and the... I think the lack of information about crypto or the misinformation, right? What's out there is misinformation about crypto keeps us from learning how we can actively participate and make a lot of money in crypto. Last was it earlier this earlier this month, early October, all of the major banks have decided that they will be investing in crypto. They'll be creating their own coins. They bought up a lot of the URLs that had to do with crypto, right? So it's very hard now to get a crypto anything URL because they bought so many of them because they recognize it's going to be a, a name recognition. As soon as you see crypto URL, you're like, oh yeah, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're doing crypto. So a lot of the banks want to be in that space now, rather than fighting it, you know, for the past couple of years, now they realize why fight? Let's just join and try to control it. Right. Like they've uh, always done. Commercial <laughs> over Customers, yes. Okay, wonderful Liddy, wonderful, wonderful Liddy. I have three questions for you. You ready? Yes. First question, will you come back again? Oh, absolutely. I love spending time with you. <laughs> okay, second question. In 80 seconds, wonderful Dr. Liddy Lewis, what is your most fervent desire? 80 seconds. Uh, my most fervent desire is to help 1 million business owners become millionaires. Because when you have access to cash, you have the ability to change the world into your vision of how good it can be. Money makes a difference. And there's no reason why we can all be making a difference. And there's no, there's no limit to the There's no limit to it. There's okay, no and the third question, may I give you a hug in front of 375,000 yes, people around the world? Let me tell you what hug stands for. Ready? Hug stands for heartfelt, unlimited giving. Heartfelt, oh. unlimited giving. Are you ready? I'm One, ready. Two, three. Roar! 
I were more glory. I love that. <laughs> to the joy of living with your humble host, Barry Shore, and joined by the most remarkable being that you'll ever have a chance to listen to. And there'll be more of her coming back, Dr. Liddy Lewis. And again, everything you want to her, you do want to know, go to www.whatawonderfulworld.barryshore.com. Because on this show, we work with the three fundamentals of life, which are one by one life. Your life has purpose, right, Libby? Absolutely. Life, and you live a purpose-driven life. You go mad. You go make a difference. And number three, unlock the power and the secrets of everyday words and terms, such as smile, seeing miracles in life every day. She's a miracle. Or seeing miracles in everyday life. Create the kind of world you want to live in, causing rethinking, enabling all to excel. Talk about rethinking, crypto, rethink. Money, mm -hmm. work, love, growth, helping people, and use four-letter words. Yes, yeah, because you live in the world of positive, purposeful, powerful, and pleasant. Love, life, hope, grow, free, play, play, swim. <laughs> Those are four-letter words. And tell everybody to F you, capital N, capital N. When you do that, people say, what are you talking about? Say, I listen to Barry Shore, the joy of living, wants to teach the world to F you. And then use the two most powerful words in the English language three times a day, every day, consciously and conscientiously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. To harmonize and network kindness. To harmonize and network kindness. Dr. Wonderful Liddy Lewis. I'm so thankful that you're here. We're blessed to have you. And we want to give everybody a blessing. And that blessing is go forth. Live exuberantly. Spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and love. Go mad. Go make a difference. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Joy of Living podcast. Now that's another step towards your healthier, happier, and wealthier life. Never hesitate to do good in the world, no matter what the situation. Join us for another upbeat discussion next time at BarryShore.com. And be sure to leave a rating and subscribe to the show to get more conversations like this. And remember to share it with your family and friends, too. See you on the next episode.